Hi, my name is Anthony Shifkumar from Anship Robotics and today what we're going to do is design uh, an analog to digital converter. And why do we need an analog to digital converter? So generally when you have a microcontroller, it would say whether it's a 12-bit converter or a 16-bit converter. And that really is the resolution of converting, say, the voltage levels into, uh, and you're sampling it to a digital value, and then you're interpreting that that number. And, and what exactly, what kind of information do you want to capture from the analog world into the digital world? One of them is, uh, we call these load cells, which uh, is an analog reading. An analog reading is a continuous reading. And these measure weight, you know, they measure uh, the weight. And generally, the weight is uh, the weight of uh, or the force that's acting on this or the load that's acting on this is uh, basically measured through as a voltage. So the voltage output will tell you and the f and and the amount of uh, weight that's pres that's uh, exerted onto these devices will be able. You can interpret them to the voltage reading from the from these outputs. And they all have a limit, which is basically, you know, 5 kgs. If you exceed the 5 kg limit, uh, you might damage the the load cell. And this is rated for 5, 5 kg, and this might be rated for 10 kgs. So if you want to get accurate readings and you want to have a high resolution, you most likely might have to buy a higher resolution analog to digital converter. As I mentioned earlier, that the normal uh, microcontrollers, ha they all by default have at least one analog to digital converter, but the resolution is not very fine, which means that if uh, the voltage reading over here states, you know, it's, uh, you know, 3.445 uh, kgs, or, or, and it's trying to interpret that reading to you, uh, a digital, um, a low resolution converter might just give you three uh, three kgs and it might uh, omit that point 0.5 or point you know the decimal places uh, the numbers after the decimal places which might be important especially when you need more accuracy and when you're trying and when it's only five kgs uh, every pound matters or every depending on the unit uh, every number might matter uh, and that's the reason why uh, in this particular video we're going to design our own uh, analog to digital converter now you might ask me when, when we're designing drones, what's the purpose of having load cells? Uh, it actually serves a, a very important role if you want to measure the force output of your propellers. You can use a load cell to measure the weight that is exerting onto uh, onto a particular object. So you don't have to make the quadcopter fly, or you can just dismount the the motors, you know, and mount it onto uh, uh, your load cell, and then and you and you mount the load cell onto a hard surface, and you can measure the force that these that the that the motor is generating and a different speed. So you can have a fine-tuned understanding of how uh, much force your motors are generating. So that's the reason why you want to have. A load cell and you want to have a good analog to digital converter because it can help you measure the force of uh, your propellers and then you might and based on that information you can come up with whether you want a two blade propeller or you want a three blade propeller what would be the diameter what would be the pitch um, and all those details uh, you can find you through experimentation and that's what we're trying to do over here by getting all the necessary sensors uh, so that when we perform certain experiments, we can fine-tune and understand uh, how we want to design the quadcopter and really make fine adjustments in order in in, uh, in terms of you know the power we want to generate in terms of the the energy it might consume, uh, and that's the reason why these load cells uh, are important. All right, so to troubleshoot and to understand how the load cell works, uh, what I have is my multimeter. And we're just going to do a very, you know, rough experiment on how the load cell works. And what I've connected is the black black wire to the negative, red wire to the positive, five volts, and these two are the signal voltage. So 
So just to give an example, I'm just, I've got my multimeter over here. Right now it's not connected to anything, so it's fluctuating. But once we connect it, I'm just gonna, you know, roughly do this. You can see it's three volts or 0 0.02 volts. And if I just add a little bit of weight to it, just with my fingers, uh, you can see it increasing. So it's now 0 0.6 volts. Now the resolution on my multimeter is um, clearly not very sensitive because there's only one decimal point that I can see. And from the data sheet, we know what the maximum voltage might be. So for example, now when there's no load, it's showing again 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So this could be calibrated. There's clearly an offset or a drift error. But as you can see, as I apply a little bit of weight, this increases. When I release it, it's two. When I increase it, it can go all the way to 0 0.8. So five volts, and then it'll tell you what the division is when we look at the um, data sheet. All right, so now let's understand how the schematic works and what we're trying to design over here. So as I mentioned, this is the input power. Uh, the inputs from the load cell to the component, uh, which is the ADS1234. And then this is the, this is just a pull-up resistor. These are the voltage inputs. This is um, capacitor. And a lot of this information comes from the data sheet itself, and I've just blindly followed it. Uh, this would be the headers for connecting the load cell. Uh, and here you have, as I mentioned, high level external ways of controlling how you want the component to function. So you can control it through the A0, A1, gain zero, gain one, speed, all measuring resolution, the speed of sampling, and how sensitive you want your readings to be. And then the C clock, S clock and SD, SDA is basically uh, the serial clock, serial data, which is part of the I square C protocol. Yeah. and. Let's have a look at how the board is designed. It's very simple layout. It's just a two uh, layer printed circuit board. Uh, what we have over here, let me. Uh, so we have uh, the main component, which is in the center. And then you have uh, all these four uh, load cells, which will be connected over here. It's, so we can connect all the, um, load cells nicely uh, to this board. And then we have the input power, which is connected on top. Uh, and yeah, and then we have the external ways of controlling this uh, I2C, uh, reading data, as well as controlling the, the, cup, the, the chip. And this is placed over here. So this is how it's gonna look like in a 3D model. Um, it's a very bare minimum breakout board uh, and uh, We'll send it for fabrication and then in part two we'll solder all the components and then we'll test and see how much more accurate or most how how sensitive this particular component is compared to just reading uh, the value from a multimeter and we can really see how this might really um, this would help in really understanding certain parts of uh, the forces that the quadcopter would generate all right and that's all there is to this video. And if you like it, please just subscribe. Uh, there'll always be a part one and part two for videos like this, where the first part we design the board, and then the second part we fabricate and then we start to test the board. Um, so, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching.